Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of a God Shift podcast. I am your host, Shana Rattler. I am excited that you decided to join us today. And so if you would, I would love for you to do me a favor. Wherever it is that you are listening to this podcast, whether it is on your laptop or your phone or your tablet, whatever device, I would love if you would take a screenshot of you taking, of you listening to this episode. And then I would love if you would post it on Instagram and then tag us at a God shift. I guess you could post it on Facebook as well and tag us at a God shift. I would appreciate that. So again, welcome. I'm very excited about our guest today, Jerome Covington. I am going to read Jerome's official bio and then I am gonna let him in his own words, kind of tell y'all who he is, and then we will get into his journey of overcoming disruption and unexpected circumstances. So born in Hawaii and raised in San Diego, California, Jerome is a military progeny who has been blessed to travel the world and be exposed to diverse learning experiences and people. These experiences serve as a perfect platform for for preparing him to minister and relate to people from all over the world, which would later become an integral part of his purpose in life. Jerome has been a poet at heart and has had the gift of rhyme all of his life, but his serious commitment to writing and reciting began in 2009 after he clearly heard the voice of the Lord tell him, I gave you a gift, use it. From that moment forward, he has been dedicated to using his God-given gifts as a scribe, which includes poetry, songwriting, and rapping. To date, Jerome has released several compilations. You can Google them and check all those out. But his most recent project entitled, You Think You Know Me, is going to be released very soon on March the 26th, 2021. So not sure when y'all are listening to this podcast. In addition to his artistic endeavors, Jerome is also a teacher and humanitarian who serves on the board of directors of Speak Out Incorporated, which is a nonprofit organization on a, miss- on a mission to bring awareness and education about the effects of domestic violence in Houston and surrounding communities. Additionally, 50% of all sales from his single, God is Greater, are donated to various hurricane and typhoon relief efforts. Jerome is an artist set apart by God who ministers through his talent for the purpose of conveying the word of God in diverse ways. His hope is that through his gifts, the minds, hearts, and eyes of people will be open so that they may realize this world is bigger than self. His ultimate purpose is that his art will be the vessel that leads people to form an intimate relationship with the Lord. Now that is a mouthful and that is eloquently written. So Jerome Covington, first of all, welcome to the podcast and tell us a little bit about, you know, in your own words, who you are and how you show up in the world. Oh my goodness, Miss Rattler, thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Every time I I hear people read that and it's like, wow. Right. And you're like, who's that? And if you're like me, you never really listen to me on video or you're in person. You never really know how you're supposed to respond when people are reading your bio. So I get that. So tell us, who are you in the world? Man, um, man, I'm just a, a man on, I mean, I'm, you know, <laughs> I, 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 I listen to all of that and I'm, and I'm just like, I'm just, I'm just Jerome. <laughs> I'm just a man on a mission for for God, you know, um, he's been such an integral and powerful, uh, you know, uh, entity in my life and person in my life that uh, I'm just humbled that he's using me in the way that he's using me and, you know, he's blessed me to to be an uh, ESL instructor where I teach um you know the english language the american english language to to people who come into the country Mm -hmm. to adults who come into the country he's blessed me with talents that i really never realized i had until my mid to late 20s i'm just i'm blown away at what god is is doing in my life and he's not done (laughs) absolutely well let's get into your journey a little bit so this is your first time listening to a God shift podcast, my definition of a God shift is the moment a disruption in your life collides with God's purpose 
and ultimately get you into a greater destiny. So can you think of a time that God used a disruption or an unexpected circumstance in your life, whether it was a setback, a delay, a disappointment, or sometimes God shifts can even be something that's positive. Right. Um, actually, something something just recently happened that was, uh, I guess it, it could be looked at as a negative and a positive, depending on who's looking at it. But the ultimate story that I wanted to share was how I got into becoming an artist. And that was actually a positive God shift because it was totally unexpected. Like I said, he, he, uh, he opened my eyes up to these talents that I didn't realize, you know, I had. Um, growing up in the in the hip hop world and the hip hop, you know, culture in the in the 90s, um, and hanging out with my friends, we would, you know, we would huddle up in these circles and freestyle and have these little rap battles and stuff like that. And, you know, we played around with it and never took it seriously. And so um you know went through life and uh got into my 20s and got saved um when i was uh in my early 20s and started going to church regularly um was uh sitting under this pastor who ministered to me and poured into me for about three years and right around that three year mark, you know, I'm big on those numbers, the three, the seven, the, you know, on the number of completion, eight, the number of new beginnings. Well, after that three years, that's when I heard the voice of God. I was literally sitting at home watching TV. I don't know if I was watching a football game or whatever I was watching. Nobody was home but me. And for the first time I heard an audible voice that said, I gave you a gift, use it. And I'm like, you know, you hear something like that, you stop in your tracks. <laughs> right, right. Because and, um, it's rare mm -hmm. that people hear the audible voice of God. It's not um, unreal, but it is unusual. It doesn't happen as often as the other ways that he speaks to us. Absolutely. And, you know, being that I was, uh, you know, being ministered to and, and, was uh, excited about being saved and excited about Jesus Christ coming into my life. And I was in his word, you know, all the time and trying to learn as much as I could learn about Jesus Christ and living for him. It was unusual, but it wasn't um, scary. And I knew it was God. It, you know, I don't know how I knew it was God, but I knew it was God. <laughs> Absolutely. So what do you think he was trying to get you to see or what was it that he was trying to get you to learn? Well, to be honest with you, instantly it's, it's you know, these things are supernatural. They, they happen supernaturally and it's hard to explain. But when he told, when he said that, I knew what he was talking about. Mm. Like when he said that, I knew what he was saying. So it was like he was preparing me to receive what he was going to tell me. Okay. At and that moment, at that time. How did you respond? Man, I would say, I would say almost immediately, probably within, the, probably within 24 to 48 hours, I started writing. I, I went into, uh, you know, I went into my, my secluded space mm -hmm. and he started giving me poetry. Wow. And that's how I started. And that's how, you know, Jay Speaks came about. Um, started writing poetry. Excuse me. Got on the phone with my dad, told him what happened. And, you know, through, th through this journey, found out he was a writer. So oh, wow. kind of hereditary that he, he, you know, he has a gift of writing. He never, he never pursued it seriously, but, you know, he, he shared with me that he, he also had the gift of, of writing. It just so happened his son ran with it. And so, <laughs> so, um, he helped me, uh, he helped me come up with my, my artist name. And, uh, I will always be, you know, grateful to my dad for that. And, uh, man, I, I wrote three, uh, I wrote three pieces, and one of those pieces is is uh, 
a staple Jay Speaks poem that that everybody <laughs> everybody loves Jay Speaks for for a poem I uh, that it, that I entitled like that, and it just talks about how you know witnessing to witnessing to different people and how you know in your witnessing so many people reject him. Wow. And and so. Uh, he gave me a poem in response to those people who are just so stubborn and bullheaded and don't want to hear anything about God. Yeah. So what I find interesting, well, not interesting, but what I love is the fact that your God shift was not necessarily a negative experience. Mm -hmm. I believe that the negative ex experiences can often be the ones that get our attention the most. They're the mm -hmm. ones that can be the most memorable and they're also the ones that people expect. So mm -hmm. when I say disruption, you know, disruption can be, you know, I had to leave my family and go make the most money I've ever made and to live the most fulfilling life I've ever had. And mm -hmm. one of the things that I like to make sure that people understand is that when you're putting your God shift in motion, it's very important that we elevate God's position in our lives. So in your opinion, two things, one, in your opinion, why is that important when you're trying to accomplish something new to actually elevate God's position in your life? And then what was your particular experience with that as you were going through this God shift? Man, I'm loving your questions. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you have to, it's, it's, it's necessary. It, it, it's absolutely necessary that you elevate God's position in your life when he, when he interjects that shift because you don't know what to do with that. You know, you don't know what direction to go. You don't know, okay, God, this is a good thing, but I don't know what to do with this. What, what, what do you want me to do with it? And one thing that I learned in this walk with God is that, and, and it's in everything, good or bad. When something happens, you say, okay, God, what is this? What do I need to do with it? Uh, what instruction do you have for me? And then when do I need to uh, implement that instruction? Right. Uh, unless you get the unless you get the what, the how, and the when, you shouldn't move. Right. Well, and I think <laughs> it's important to note that he's not going to always give you everything all at once. Absolutely. Because Absolutely. oftentimes he wants to see are you going to do anything with what it is that I gave you last? Mm -hmm. And oftentimes people get stuck in the how or they get stuck in not being able to mm. see the entire journey. And mm -hmm. very seldom is he going to give you the entire journey. He may show you the bigger vision, but he's not going to show you every single step. And catch this, you don't have to know every single step because you can only take one step at a time. Right? Absolutely. 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 I want to pause for a quick commercial break and then we're going to get back into some advice that we can give people that are listening to this podcast. Absolutely. This episode is brought to you by the free guide when God says shift. Inside that guide, you will discover the four shifts required to follow God's plan to move you out of disruption and into a greater destiny, expectancy, and possibility. Head to GodSaysShift.com to access it now. So, Jerome, let's, let's get into advice mode, if you mm -hmm. will, because there may be people that are listening to this and said, okay, great. I now recognize why God was using the disruption, why he was using the unexpected circumstances in my life. I, I now see what it is that he wants me to do. I recognize that in order for me to implement this God shift with grace and ease. It's important for me to elevate his position in my life. Like conceptually, I understand all of that. But if someone is listening to this and they are either struggling to embrace that disruption or they're struggling to elevate God's position in their life, what advice would you give them? Uh, be, be sensitive to be very, very, very sensitive to everything that is happening around you. Um, not, not to say that, you know, because so many people will say, well, you, man, you being deep. Don't be so deep. Well, it's not about being deep. 
but it is about looking deeper into what is happening around you. And I became very sensitive to everything that was happening around, around me. For example, I started, I started writing and then I, uh, I, I, I sought out wise counsel. And this is the word of God. The word of God advises you of that. So in elevating God, you know, posi God's position in your life, uh, get in your word and get instruction from the word of God, because you're right. God won't give you everything all at once because he's giving you instruction in his word for you to follow. And you follow that instruction. And at the same time, you're trusting him to lead and guide you into the next thing. And so, uh, man, I went from writing poetry to transitioning into rap. <laughs> Didn't know I was going to be doing that. Into then transition, he transitioned me from rapping into acting. And it's just, and it's just this uh, treasure chest of of gifts that he's just steadily opening up and pulling yeah. out. I want to and speak. I want to speak to that counsel thing for a moment because mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. said that one of the things that you did was you sought, you sought counsel. Mm -hmm, and I want to make mm -hmm. sure that the audience understands that sometimes it's going to be necessary for you to seek spiritual counsel. Mm -hmm. And then other times it's going to be necessary for you to seek practical counsel as well. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. when you are attempting something that you have never done before, it's important that you seek the counsel of the people that understand the waters that you're now treading. So if there is a spiritual aspect of your God shift that you need to master, then you absolutely need spiritual counsel. But one of the errors that I believe that a lot of believers make is that they want to go to their spiritual counsel for everything. Well, guess what? I know you love your pastor and I am believing that you are sitting under the leadership of someone that can lead and guide you spiritually. Mm -hmm. But if you are looking to accomplish something in the natural realm that your pastor has no experience in, do not expect him to be able to give you sound counsel in that area, right? So for example, Ooh. if you were embarking on entrepreneurship for the first time in your life and your pastor has never done anything in the realm of entrepreneurship, I'm sorry, that's not the best place to go for practical counsel for that. Right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, you, <laughs> you preaching today. Man, don't get me started early on a Monday morning. Man. So you know, I, I think that it is great because, you know, the Bible talks about, you know, seeking out counsel. And when we, mm -hmm. when, when we increase our chances of being successful, the exact scripture is escaping my mind right now, but we actually increase our chances that we will be successful when mm -hmm. we seek out counsel. Mm -hmm. But we can't mm -hmm. automatically assume that that counsel is always going to be spiritual. It's going mm -hmm. to depend, you know, just like they tell you not to take financial advice from broke people. You don't want to, you don't want to take spiritual advice from, for people that are, are not, you know, mature in their spiritual law. And you don't want to take practical advice for people that have never been there, done that and got the t-shirt. Man, look, it, it, it sounds practical and it sounds like it should be a no brainer, but that's what we do as Christians. We, we go to our pastor for everything, or we everything. go to our evangelist for everything, or we go to our prophet or prophetess for everything. Definitely. And you should never go to somebody who's not embarked on that endeavor that you are pursuing. And you, it's no slight to the person. Right. But it, absolutely. I cannot advise you in an area that I have no experience, Come unless on. it's to tell you who you can go talk to who does. Come on. And right. the wise counsel, right, absolutely. And the wise counsel that I sought out was a famous poet here in Houston. Exactly. I'm embarking on poetry, so I need to ask another poet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, nobody who ain't never wrote nothing. Come on, or, or stood on anybody's stages professionally, right? right. right? And so, you know, the, the Lord placed on my heart, okay, you need to go, you know, go to these different open mics and stuff like that. And so, you know, I called a young lady here in Houston, her, uh, uh, her name is One, and she, um, 
you know, I got her on the phone and she was so humble that I called her. She was like, why does everybody think they can call me and ask me what they need to do? <laughs> but, you know, it. right, right. And, and, and I was seeing her all on social media and, and I said, let me call her. So I reached out and, and uh, she gave me some, some, you know, the best advice she could give me. And uh, I ran with it and look, God did the rest. Right. So as we begin to wrap up, Jerome, is there anything that you would like to leave our listeners with? Any final words? Oh, oh my goodness. Uh, man, trust God. Um, all God wants us to do is, is lean and depend on him. Yes, he's given us knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, uh, you know, in and of ourselves. And he's given us the freedom to choose. But with that freedom to choose, he wants us to choose him. He wants us to choose, you know, him being the all-knowing and, and, and the omnipresent. He wants us to choose him because he has a plan for our lives already laid out. And so he wants us to trust him to lay out that plan for us step by step. And so, uh, yeah, man, it's the hardest thing. It's even hard to explain, but we have to lean and depend and trust uh, that God has everything laid out for us. And recognizing that it's a partnership. You know, God, mm -hmm. you know, although Absolutely. God is God all by himself, he wants to partner with you and co-create the future. Now, he already has the plans. He already is, you know, has everything that he needs that he needs to put in you. But he wants to partner with you. Now, you're going to have to ride shotgun and let him be in the driver's seat. But you both have a role to play. Because what I don't want to happen is for people to feel like leaning on God is passive. Right. When you're leaning on God, that does not indicate that you don't have a role to play and there are not actions that you need to take, but you're Absolutely. actually co-creating what this thing is going to look like and having someone to go back to. It's almost like trying to put together something or understand why something is not working properly and not go back to the manufacturer instructions. God is like the manufacturer instructions, and he's going to tell you how to put it together. And then there's going to be a section in the back of troubleshooting. You know, when the thing doesn't work well six months later, you can go back to the troubleshooting section and go, now, what, what could potentially be going on? Right. And, and, and it blows my mind that God would even, God being who he is, would even want a partner like a powerful, almighty God of the universe. <laughs> Wants to partner with all us, right? Like, wow! Like, wrap your mind around that. Like, he loves us just man. that much. So, Jerome, man. where can our listeners find you? Oh my goodness, I'm everywhere. <laughs> okay, I don't want to. So I don't know where everywhere is. So help me oh, out. No, no, no. <laughs> I don't want to sound arrogant and say Google me, but you can literally type in J Speaks the poet. And all the social media, the links to the music, everything will come up. I'm uh, literally Jay Speaks, the poet, on Instagram, on SoundCloud, on Facebook, uh, what else? Twitter, uh, YouTube, uh, I'm Amazon, Spotify. I'm everywhere. Jay Speaks, the poet. Perfect. Is, it, and is there anything that you would like to offer our listen listeners? Oh my goodness. Um, you can download my uh, new single, Prayer Closet. Um, it's actually available now um, because it's a, a, like a courtesy uh, song that uh, is re being uh, opened and released before the album drops uh, March 26th. So that's uh, available to the iTunes. Actually, actually, not just the iTunes and uh, Apple Music users, but uh, also Amazon. Okay. So you can go on. There's a link to it in the show tunes because mm -hmm. I don't want anybody to, to have to go dig for stuff. So right, right. the different places that they can find you and where they can download the single, I will make sure that the links to those are actually in the show notes. So all they have to do is click it. We will do the work for them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate you contributing to our listeners and giving them an inside look into how you put a positive God shift in motion. Thank you so much for being here. 
Oh, thank you for having me. Blessings. Yes. You're welcome. Thank you, everyone, for listening to another episode of A God Shift Podcast with Shana Rattler. I hope that you will share this episode and that you will listen back in next week. Thank you and have a great day. Bye-bye.